for most of the session, most of the 60 days, it felt like a normal session. It was right at the end that things got strange. They pushed on through. We kept thinking they're on borrowed time here. All right, and let's move back to the recently adjourned legislative session. Is it fair to say things didn't quite end up where lawmakers and, and the governor thought they would even 60 days ago or 30 days ago? You mentioned that earlier, but just give us a sense of that. Probably it's a combination of yes and no. I mean, coronavirus didn't completely derail the legislative session, and they kept doing their work right up to the end until adjournment. And this all came about as the session was winding down anyway. So what was notable is in the end, they appropriated out of the rainy day fund $200 million. It started out at $100 million, and then they doubled it on the last day of the session. And those were unanimous votes in the House and Senate. Democrats and Republicans, everyone agreed this was an emergency, and this is why the state has an emergency fund. So they did that, but they also kind of stuck with their agenda, continued passing non-coronavirus related bills right up to the end. They did pass a supplemental budget, which is an update to the state's two-year operating budget, transportation budget, and capital budget. And then there was a whole bunch of policy in there as well. So for most of the session, most of the 60 days, it felt like a normal session. It was right at the end that things got strange they pushed on through. We kept thinking they're on borrowed time here. You know, if somebody has a suspected case of coronavirus, it could shut this place down, but they got through to the end without that happening. Could you give us a quick overview of a few of the bills that died, that didn't pass? And it might not be the bills you may think, given there's a Democratic majority in both chambers, Democratic governor. I'm thinking specifically of things like on clean fuel standards and the death penalty, those died. The governor's uh, top priority probably prior to this coronavirus um, crisis was that he wanted this clean fuels, he calls it, or low carbon fuel standard bill. It's something he pushed for last year as well. In fact, he was talking about it when he was first elected and first took office in 2013. And yet it was a case of deja vu. It got through the House once again, but died in the Senate Transportation Committee, where the chair of that committee is not a fan of this policy. And really what it involves is requiring the refineries to blend a less carbon intensive blend of fuel so that then it's less carbon polluting. So that didn't go through despite the governor wanting it very much. The death penalty repeal we thought might have a better chance this year. It's passed the Senate now three years in a row with bipartisan support. What was different this year is the entire House Democratic caucus caucused on it behind closed doors but it didn't come up for a vote. One of the reasons that the speaker said it didn't come up is because there's a House Republican. Her sister was murdered by the Green River Killer. And recall that the Green River Killer confessed to a number of those murders and helped lead investigators to the bodies of many of his victims when they negotiated with him taking the death penalty off the table. And so the speaker said that was one consideration that she doesn't wanna cause people kind of undue pain. On the other hand, she said this issue is not going away and that she'll be looking for ways going forward to repeal the death penalty. I do just want to mention that the death penalty has been ruled unconstitutional by the Supreme Court, at least as it's applied, and yet it it is still though on the books. You can see all of Austin's reporting on these and other topics at nwpb.org. Thank you for joining us here in the unique Northwest.